from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the distinguished head of the music division of the Library of Congress, Susan H. Vida. To those of you in the audience who come to this event every year and wouldn't miss it, you know that you will not be disappointed. And to those of you who are here for the first time, I can promise you that you are in for a wonderful treat tonight. So to all of you, welcome to perhaps the most popular concert we present every year, the ASCAP We Write the Songs 2017 concert. Thank you very much. I welcome you on behalf of Carla Hayden, the new Librarian of Congress, who, to her disappointment, is forced to miss this event because of a prior commitment in California. Unfortunately, she, she can do many things, but she hasn't figured out how to be in two places at the same time. Tonight is about the joy and thrill and privilege of experiencing some of our most memorable songs as presented by the men and women who created them. But it is also a very, about a very important partnership. Partnership between the songwriters, the talented women and men who inspire us with their creativity. The members of Congress who create the laws to protect the creators of our cultural heritage. The Library of Congress, which gathers, safeguards, organizes, and makes available the creative product for the study and inspiration for future generations. And ASCAP, the world leader in performance royalties, advocacies, and service for music creators. I'd like to thank ASC ASCAP for supporting this great event again this year and to recognize Beth Matthews, ASCAP CEO, and Colleen McDonough, the executive director of the ASCAP Foundation. And now for the highlight of the evening, please welcome a powerful force for all music creators, Oscar, Grammy, Golden Globe winning, Hall of Fame songwriter, ASCAP president and chairman, and ASCAP Foundation president, Paul Williams, and now I'm out of breath. <laughs> Thank you. My name is Paul Williams, and I'm an American songwriter. And I, I never learned to be two places at the same time, but I came really close in the late 60s. There was one night where I got <laughs> Good evening, everybody. This is like coming home for us. Thank you, Sue. Thank you for hosting tonight's event, and thanks to your entire team under the leadership of, of Librarian of Congress, Dr. Carla Hayden. We treasure the special relationship between the ASCAP Foundation and the Library of Con Congress, which is incidentally the home of the ASCAP archival collection. You need to give it a look. It's spectacular. This evening is our way to say thank you to our many friends in Congress who are in the room tonight for all of you that you do for all of us. 615,000, wait a minute, that's actually wrong. 620,000 composer, songwriter, and publisher members of ASCAP. We are, we are grateful for your recognition of how precious the copyright is, the copyright. To me, it is a holy word. It is the very bedrock of music creators' ability to earn a livelihood, to, to put food on the table and gas in the car to get your babies to school. 
We treasure the mutual respect and the affinity between those who write the laws and those who write the songs. And I spent my whole life writing codependent anthems and thank God I could make a living at it because of those copyrights. <laughs> we have great friends on both sides of the aisle. One such friend is the vice chair of the House Republican Conference and the representative of the 9th District of Georgia. He serves on both the House Judiciary and the Rules Committees. He is the vice chair of the Judiciary Subcommittee on Courts, Intellectual Property, and the Internet. Very, very important stuff to all of us who make our living in music. Please welcome a dear friend, as good a friend as music creators have, the Honorable Doug Collins. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. I hope you're in for a great night. Paul, my dear friend, all my folks at ASCAP, it's a great night. And I'm thrilled to be able to kick off tonight's performances with two very talented gentlemen. They're singers, songwriters, musicians, and producers from the Philadelphia area. They met back in 1971 as students at the University of Pennsylvania and later formed the nucleus of the band that became the 80s hit makers, the Hooters. With such, yes. With such radio staples as And We Dance, Where Do the Children Go, and Day by Day, individually, our next performances have also chalked up a long list of credits as producers, session musicians, and songwriters. In fact, each one has crafted a timeless hit for so hit songs for Joan Osborne and Cindy Lauper, respectively. But also tonight is also about how it makes us feel. It is also about what brought us to me. They may have started in 1971. I found them in 1986. <laughs> And they have been making hits ever since. Please welcome to the stage, Rob and Eric the Hooters. Hello, everybody. Hello. We are songwriters, and uh, we've been doing it most of our lives. Grew up with the Beatles and Stones and said, hey, we'd like to try and do that, and we've been doing it. And thanks to ASCAP for allowing us to do it for so many years. We appreciate all the support. Uh, this is a song we wrote and recorded with Cindy Lauper. If you're lost, you can look at 
you will find me Time after time If you fall, I will catch you I'll be waiting Time after time Thank you. Here's a little something that one, of you, one or two of you may have danced to. Walking my way, hear the music. 
Is it fair when she says, are we getting too close? Do we dare to get closer? The room is spinning as she whispers my name and we dance like a wave on the ocean romance. We would lie as in love and we dance swept away for a moment by chance. Yeah, we dance and dance and we dance like a wave on the ocean romance. We were liars in love and we danced Swept away for a moment by chance Yeah, we danced and 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 And we danced Do you need to stop now? Come on, boys! And we danced And we dance, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, when we dance and 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 dance, whoa. And we dance, hey, yeah, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the representative of the 5th District of the State of Tennessee and a member of the House Committees on Armed Services and Oversight and Government Reform, he is also a member of the Congressional Songwriters Caucus. Please welcome the Honorable Jim Cooper. What a great night. What a great night. I'm Jim Cooper, and I have the best job in Congress because I get to represent Music City, USA, Nashville, Tennessee. Tonight, we have the special treat to hear a powerfully gifted and versatile vocalist and singer-songwriter, Lettucey. She's nine times Grammy-nominated. She was born talented. She started singing with the New Orleans Symphony when she was a child. She moved to Oakland, California, and since then, in 2011, she had a top 10 Billboard album, uh, Pieces of Me. She starred in the movie Selma, playing Mahalia Jackson. And now she's touring in 2017 with the band Maxwell. You're about to hear Lettucey. Hello, everyone. Hi. Wow, this is great seeing everyone together for music. I grew up in a home where I had some crazy parents, a drummer and a singer. And they would record and write songs with their band in the living room. We had that one track house in New Orleans and that's how I just was inspired by my mother being a lead singer. So everything she did, I wanted to do and it started with songwriting. And so I'm a product of the public school system, performing arts. Thank you. And I'm just so grateful to whomever signed off to support the performing arts schools that I was a part of. And, and now I'm giving back. I spend my life doing this, giving back and asking more to give back. So thank you for tonight. And thank you for just allowing me, ASCAP, once again, to be a part of a wonderful evening. On guitar is Eric Walls. He's going to play a song. This song I wrote when I was sleeping on the floor and I was ready to give up singing because I didn't fit in. And uh, I called my mom one day, I said, Mama, I think I'm gonna quit and just become a teacher or something. And she said, let us see, I don't wanna hear all that. You're going through some things, but you're gonna be all right. And I said, dang, Mom, that sounds like a song. <laughs> now she won 15%. <laughs> So we need help in that department, you see. <laughs> so this song, I 
thought I was singing about my pain, but it ended up being my first Grammy-nominated song. And everyone loves it. And uh, I didn't know that people would come up to me and say, I'm going through cancer, and this song helped me. It's a simple phrase called, all right. Here we go. This life can make me so confused, but it's all right. Living day by day, I feel so used, and that ain't right. And I just want to run and hide, but I don't have the time to cry. And it's all right, it's all right, all right. Many thoughts are running through my head, it's all right. Wishing to be somewhere else but here and it's all right And I can't wait to see your face I need a smile and your embrace And I'm all right, I'm all right, yeah Life can bring us through many changes It's all right, just don't give up Know that it's gonna be all right People come and they go, that's just the way that it goes. It's all right. Sometimes the rain, it makes me sad, but it's all right. And some things in the world, they make me mad, but it's all right. In the morning when I see the sun, I know I'm not the only one. And it's all right. It's all right, yeah. I wish I had some money to pay my bills. It's still like that, they hire them. And I can't even buy my dress on sale, but it's all right. Oh, having money don't mean a thing, but loving you is everything. And I'm all right, yeah, yeah. Life can bring you through many changes. And it'll make you feel bad, but don't give up. People come and they go Oh, everything is everything It's all right Whoa. Ah, everything is everything Whoa. It's gonna be all right Whoa. Everything is everything it's gonna be all right. Life can bring you through yeah. many changes, yeah. Oh, but never give up, never give up. Hey, oh, oh, oh. hey. Yeah, do 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 it's Ella's birthday today, you know that, right? Don't be scared. I'm not gonna do too much right now. I'm just gonna be nice and soft. Yeah. I want you to do this. If you can do it. All right, all right, all right. Yeah. Come on. Keep going, come on. Hey! 
It's all right, just don't give up, know that it's gonna be all right. People come and they go, that's just the way that it goes. It's all A song can bring us together, can it? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I'm so excited. Y'all sound good. I knew I had three in the audience that could sing, but wow. Here's another song for you from my favorite songwriter. He has a lot of words, that's why I had that teleprompter. So, <laughs> so if you if you know it, please come on in, sing with us. It's by Stevie Wonder. Here we go. You ready? Too long. Go higher, higher, higher. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the representative of the 5th District of the State of Maryland, he is the House Democratic Whip and has served in Congress since 1980. Please welcome the Honorable Steny Hoyer. Ladisi, I think you've left the stage. I don't know whether you can hear me, but I want you to know nowadays I get up every morning and say to myself, Lord, it's going to be all right. <laughs> my, my, my. Paul Williams, I can't see you, but right here. <laughs> Mr. President, it's good to be with you, sir. Susan Vita, thank you very much for putting on these programs. Uh, and I want to say how proud we are of our Librarian of Congress. I'm a congressman from Maryland, and Carla Hayden, of course, was with us before she was the first African-American woman librarian of Congress. Now, it's my great privilege to introduce to you somebody who lives uh, just outside of my district, I think. He may even be in my district, but he's from Laurel, Maryland. The Maryland-based songwriter, vocalist, and guitarist, I'm about to introduce. Uh, worked earlier in his career as a background vocalist for Shakira, Jose Feliciano, Julio Iglesias, uh, and a lot of other really very prominent names you would know and you hear all the time. Since his breakthrough album, State of Mind, collaborated with Herbie Hancock, Jason Mraz, Stevie Wonder, Diane Reeves, and Bill Withers, among others. You've heard his songs on movie soundtracks and have seen him on TV. Shows hosted by David Letterman, Jay Leno, Craig Ferguson, and Jimmy Kimmel. Here he is in person, blind almost since birth, but insightful as any person I know. Please join me in welcoming the very talented Raul Madone. Thank you. It's an honor to be here tonight and uh, Thank you, Mr. Steny Hoyer, for that wonderful introduction. I'd like to uh, start out with a new song. I have a brand new album. Uh, it's the second album that I've produced myself uh, using a computer and no mouse, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and, uh, and the album is called Badass and Blind. And uh, this song is entitled, Pedal to the Metal. I don't drive, but if I did, I'd be a race car driver. I don't die, but if I did, 
I'd be a deep sea diver Back up plan, I'm not your man Just in case, doesn't win the race I won't get your buried treasure With compromise and half measures Push on through till you get to the other side Pedal to the metal With compromise and half measures Push on through till you get to the other side And keep the pedal to the metal so much so I uh, I did this thing that uh, you're not supposed to do go against the odds uh, I was in I was much too old to move to New York but I did it anyway and uh, I wrote this song in the in the throes of trying to figure out what I was gonna do it has the line, I want to be rich in it. <laughs> and, uh, and this song kind of changed my life. And, uh, and uh, as, I make, as I say uh, when I talk about this song on stage, I went to New York and I got a job. No, I'm just kidding. I wrote a song. <laughs> this is called State of Mind. Worry about 
about the future. Worrying about the future don't change the past. Used to think tomorrow would be better. But now I know that I'm doing the best that I can. I'm just a man trying to find the reasons why I stand. Took some time to realize that I am what I am. And I want to be rich. I want to be happy. And live inside a love that shines bright enough to last a lifetime. I want to be rich more than a fantasy. Ride the winds and climb. Because it's all a state of mind. It's all a state of mind. Wake up in the morning and I turn the pages Don't understand what's going down Everybody's acting so outrageous It's gonna take a lot of love to turn things around And I'm just a man Trying to find those reasons why I stand Took some time to realize that I am what I am And I wanna be rich, I wanna be happy and live inside a love that shines right enough to last a lifetime. I wanna be rich, more than a fantasy. Ride the winds and climb, cause it's all a state of mind. 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 It's a taking and the giving that makes the slap worth living. I wanna be rich. I wanna be happy. And live inside and love that shines bright enough to last a lifetime. I wanna be rich. More than a fantasy, by the winds and climb. Cause it's all the state of mind. I wanna be happy. And live inside and love that shines bright enough to last a lifetime. Ladies and gentlemen, the representative from Florida's 6th Congressional District, 
a member of the House Committees on Foreign Affairs, Oversight, and Government Reform, and the Judiciary. Please welcome the Honorable Ron DeSantis. Thank you, thank you. Wow, uh, great performances, and I'm very honored to be able to introduce our next performer who grew up in a great part of the country, Central Florida, to become one of the preeminent forces in pop music. As a front man for Matchbox 20, he's the voice and writer or co-writer of the band's many hit songs, including If You're Gone, 3 AM, Push, Unwell, and Mad Season. And his contribution as vocalist and co-writer of the Carlos Santana smash hit Smooth cemented his superstar status, earning him three Grammy Awards. He's also enjoyed success as a solo artist, racking up hit singles like Lonely No More, This Is How a Heart Breaks, and Her Diamonds. This summer, we'll see him back with Matchbox 20 on a national tour. But lucky for us, we don't need to wait that long to see him, so it's my honor to present Rob Thomas. Hey, guys. I am... Um... I want to say a couple important things. One thing is, Raul, what was that about? Why, why would you put me after that? What is that? That's like a bad joke you guys are playing on me. I want to say to Eric and Rob, you guys taught me how to write a bridge, even though neither of these two songs going to play has a bridge. Um, and the only way that I can... Uh, I'm, I'm gonna tell you uh, two stories uh, with these songs and they both involve famous people that I've met. I'm just gonna drop them down there and you can pick them up later. Um, <laughs> when I was a kid, I grew up in, in uh, Florida at the time. Uh, I've been in New York for about 19 years now. But if you grew up in, in Florida and it's the 80s and you, you're a weird kid with two earrings and you don't know anything about trucks or sports or guns, and everybody thinks you're half gay on your mom's side. Uh, <laughs> you have a hard time meeting girls. And so I would, I would literally walk around when I first started to play. The only thing that could make me different was to play music. And so I had the Lionel Richie's greatest hit songbook. And I would, I would carry it tucked under my arm because I knew at some point if I went to a party, a house, well, you guys know house parties, right? House parties is like that thing that your kids are doing while you're here. <laughs> I would go to the house party and then eventually all of the, the football guys would pass out and leave me alone with their girlfriends. <laughs> and I would sing Stuck On You. It was a bad move, but it was my move, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so like years later, after I, I first got signed, I, I was in LA and I was at the L'Hermitage in Los Angeles and I walk in into the bar and there in the back looking majestic was Lionel Richie. I, I think there was light emanating from him. Maybe it was just me. <laughs> but I walked over to him, and I'm going to be a little crude, ma'am, and I apologize. I walked over to him, and I said, Lionel, like I knew him, I said, Lionel, your songs got me so laid. <laughs> and he said, me too. <laughs> So, so after writing all of these songs, and I realized one thing about writing, at some point when I was writing, I was just writing from the outside in. I was writing songs to try and meet girls. I was trying to show something about myself. I was trying to show people how different I thought I was or how compassionate I thought that I was. And when I was 12 years old, my mom got cancer and I started to take care of her. And when I was like 18 or 19, I wrote this song and it started off as a ballad and then because I was young and impetuous, it just got faster and faster until I recorded it faster. But uh, this is the first song that I ever wrote that meant something to me, and so I hope you guys appreciate it. Well, she said it's cold outside and she hands me my raincoat She's always worried about things like that You 
She said it's all gonna end and it might as well be my fault And she only sleeps when it's raining And she screams but her voice is straining She says baby It's 3 a.m. I must be lonely And she says baby and I can't help but be scared of it all sometimes But the rain's gonna wash away, I believe it Oh yes She's got a little bit of something God, it's better than nothing And in her color portrait world She believes that she's got it all going on And she swears the moon don't hang Is quite as high as it used to Because she's crazy And she only sleeps when it's raining And she screams Till her voice is straining She says, baby it's 3 a.m. I must be lonely. You hear what she says, baby? Then I can't help but be scared of it all sometimes. But the rain's gonna wash away, I believe. In this, oh, in this. Well, God help me, I believe this. She believes her life is made up of all that she's used to And the clock on her wall has been stuck at three for days and days and days She thinks that happiness is a map that sits on her doorway Her hair but outside, it stopped raining It's 3 a.m. I must be lonely. The hell when she says, baby. baby. Well, I can't help but be scared of it all sometimes. But the rain's gonna wash away, I believe this. It's 3 a.m. I must be lonely. We're here when she says, baby. Well, I can't help but be scared of it all. How about this band, everybody? How about this band, everybody? I get like that. I can feel good, man. Standing with Omar at my back, that feels good. Man. I feel taller when you play drums. Right? I, um, all right. So I, I met Carlos Santana. He, he's not here. Um, <laughs> I met Carlos, so I had just, uh, first off, we had just gotten off the road for three years from our first record. And this was a time when uh, you could sell records and we sold a lot of records and so we just kept touring forever. <laughs> and I got off the road and uh, didn't know what it was, but I knew that I thought that I was a rock star. And, uh, then I met Carlos and I realized that everything that I'd ever done up to that point was cute to him. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, me and uh, Etal Sure, we, we wrote this song Smooth and we, we wrote it uh, in, in Soho when I was living in, in, first moved to New York. And so I didn't meet Carlos until I got to San Francisco. We went to his studio and we recorded the song. And I walked in, I stuck out my hand and the first thing he said is, oh Rob, you, you must be married to a Latin woman. And I said, I am. I said, my, my wife is, is uh, Boricua and she's uh, half Spanish as well. I said, but how did you know? And he said the greatest line ever. He said, because in your song, you have a line that says, I would change my life to better suit your mood. <laughs> and he said, the second that I heard that, I was like, well, that white boy is married to somebody Spanish. There's no way. 
I'm saying that I know my P's and Q's, folks, is what I'm saying. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you guys for letting me be a part of this night. It's special. <laughs> You can stand up, nobody's gonna be mad. Man, it's a hot one, like seven inches from the midday sun. I hear you whisper and the words melt everyone, but you stay so cool. My million keys are my Spanish Harlem Mona Lisa You're my reason for reason And the step in my groove And if you said this life ain't good enough I would give my world to live to up I could change my life to better suit your mood because you're so smooth And it's just like the ocean Under the moon It's the same as the emotion That I get from you You got the kind of love That can be so smooth Yeah, give me your heart Make it real Or else forget about it Tell you one thing If you would leave it be a cry of shame In every breath, in every word I hear your name and it's calling me out And out from the bio You hear my rhythm on your radio you feel the turning of the world It's so soft and slow It's turning you round and round And if you said this life ain't good enough I would give my world to live to all I could change my life to better suit your mood Because you're so smooth it's like the ocean under the moon It's the same as the emotion that I get from you You got the kind of love here that can be so smooth yeah. Give me your heart, make it real Or else forget about it Come on! Same as the emotion that I get from you You got the kind of love here that can be so smooth, yeah Give me your heart, make it real Or else forget about it, yeah There's no forget about it, yeah There's no forget about it Thank you guys, thanks Paul, thank you for asking that. Ladies and gentlemen, here to introduce our next performance is the representative of the 27th District of California. She serves on the House Small Business and Judiciary Committees and is a member of the Subcommittee on Courts, Intellectual Property, and the Internet. She is also co-founder and co-chair of the Creative Rights Caucus. Please welcome the Honorable Judy Chu.
wonderful it is to be here with ASCAP and with the songwriters that have made this nation great. And it, yes. And it reminds us about why we need to make sure that songwriters can make the living they deserve. And now, it's my pleasure to introduce another incredible songwriter, a rising star in the world of jazz. She was born in Queens, New York, and both of her parents were teachers, a recipient of the ASCAP's Foundation's Herb Albert Young Composers Award. She's continued to garner increased attention for her remarkable skill as a composer, singer, and musician. All About Jazz calls her a first-class saxophonist that blows the proverbial roof off the place. <laughs> she leads her own quartet and has also worked with the likes of Diane Reeves, John Hendricks, Patti LaBelle, Shaka Khan, Russell Malone, Alicia Keys, Jill Scott, and Erica Badu. Her latest album, called Inside the Moment, will be released in May. Please welcome the wonderful Camille Thurman. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. <laughs> I just would like to say first, thank you to the ASCAP Foundation for having me here and thank you for supporting me for so many years. Um, I was very fortunate to win the Herb Albert Young Jazz Composers Award, not just once, but twice because of the ASCAP Foundation. <laughs> and as a young composer and instrumentalist or artist, it's great to know that there's people out there that hear you and take your music to um, heights that you can barely even dream about. Um, I wrote my last album, Origins, and I was, trying to sh I was struggling as a musician, but also emerging on the scene and trying to make ends meet. And one of the beautiful things about writing is that you get to write about life. And one of the coolest things about that also is that not only do you get to write about life, but people get to hear it and they get to be touched by it even if they don't know you. And on top of that, the beautiful thing is having organizations like ASCAP where they can pay you for your music to be played and make sure that you're able to make a living. Because the reality is, is with, with streaming and with downloading, it's getting a little harder and harder and harder for musicians to, to make that living a reality. And organizations like the ASCAP Foundation, they make it possible for us to continue creating our art and continue sharing our experiences of life and share it with you, the public. So, yeah. This tune we're going to perform for you this evening is an original composition of mine entitled Pursuit with a Purpose. Hope it inspires you. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, here to introduce our next performance is the co-founder and co-chair of the Congressional Songwriters Caucus. Representing Tennessee's 7th Congressional District, she serves on the House Energy and Commerce Committee. Please welcome the Honorable Marsha Blackburn. Thank you all. Listen, this evening is absolutely so special. It really has become such a tradition here on Capitol Hill. And to all the artists and the songwriters, who make this possible for us, I just want you to know that this is an event where members bring their spouses in for this evening, and everyone enjoys it just so very much. What a delight and what a treat. So we thank you. ASCAP, we thank you. And to the amazing Paul Williams, who year after year, you bring this together for us. I have to tell you, we just are deeply appreciative to all of you. Thank you for blessing us in such a spectacular way. Thank you all. Well, I have the truly distinct pleasure of introducing two, not one, but two of the most prominent music creators in Nashville. First, a Shreveport, Louisiana native who grew up in Nashville in a high-achieving Music City family. He's a songwriter, a musician, and a producer. And like his father and brothers, his career took off in the world of contemporary Christian music. And he has since broadened his focus to include country and pop and rock. He is the Grammy-winning co-writer of a huge hit recorded by Eric Clapton and has also written songs and collaborated with this list. Listen, Bonnie Raitt, Faith Hill, Garth Brooks, Ricky Skaggs, and the artist who joins him on this stage tonight. I am referring to the multifaceted Gordon Kennedy. And joining him is a British-born songwriter, an innovative guitarist who makes his home right in Nashville. Four decades back, he was a media sensation. In today's terms, we would say he went viral. He first came to the attention of those of us in the U.S. in the early 70s as the lead guitarist of the band Humble Pie but truly caught fire later in the decade with a live double album called Frampton Comes Alive, a multi-platinum smash that spent, get this, 97 weeks on the Billboard charts. Thankfully, he has continued to write and record. His latest album is the highly acclaimed Acoustic Classics. I believe he has brought along his famous talk box. So please join me in welcoming the amazing Peter Frampton and the incredible Gordon Kennedy. Yes, uh, I have to uh, make a, a short, oh, Aiden, uh, just in case my daughter calls, I don't <laughs> have to. Um, yes, uh, unfortunately, for those of you looking forward to the talk box, it's not going to be with us tonight. Uh, we've been, because we've been doing this um, uh, raw tour, which uh, we've done four of them now, uh, just all acoustic, Gordon and myself, and then my son has been opening up for us too. So, um, and the idea for this came from um, doing a, uh, an acoustic classics CD that I did, which you can steam, I mean stream. Um, and uh, we'll talk about that tomorrow. Um, and um, 
So uh, this is basically, I, I went into the studio and, and said, well, I'll knock these songs I've been playing for so many years off in a second. And of course, um, I was very critical and realized that it wasn't, it, it sounded like me without the band. It, so I then came up with an MO of uh, taking the songs back to when they were just written. And um, that's what we've tried to do on the, on the acoustic classic CD and also on these raw tours. And we've just finished one leg. So um, we just feel that um, it's great to come out here and it's almost like a one-on-one -on -one with you guys as if you'd come around for coffee, not all at once. And, um, and I'd said, you want to hear a new song I wrote last night. And that's the way we could try to go back and reverse engineer them and write them. So it's just for you. Me, me first, okay. <laughs> All right, I'll go first. Um, so it's been about 18 years ago that, that, that we met for the first time, and you know, when they, these guys were talking about getting us together, they, they realized that my chance to get with, them, with him was because I was fresh on the heels of having a song of the year at the Grammys for this Clapton song that I wrote with Tommy Sims and Wayne Kirkpatrick. And then, of course, they, he was fresh on the heels of being Peter Frampton. <laughs> So they didn't have to twist my arm at all. I think, in fact, he's probably got twist marks on his arm, pinch marks on mine. But anyway, so I thought uh, maybe first we, I would get to uh, enjoy having, first of all, the, one of the greatest guitar players yeah. in the world right here is my band. <laughs> so do that. let me do that song for you.
my band, Peter Frampton. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. You got, you got those, any songs that people know? Um, well, I was going to, um, I was going to tell them about the uh, when this one actually came about. Okay. Um, I was, I'd gone to the Bahamas in 1970. <laughs> and um, and uh, I, I wanted to, I had to write an album in three weeks. That was it. You tour for six weeks, off the road, six weeks to write, record. That's how it used to go. And, um, and so anyway, I was down there three weeks. The first two weeks, I wrote nothing. Um, I was hanging out a lot with Alvin Lee at the time. We were partying too much, so I didn't write too much the first two weeks. Then he left, and um, uh, the first day of the last week, um, got to write the whole album, so I, I got up and I, 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 uh, I picked my guitar up and I said, okay, let's try something. So I wrote um, another song that, that I'm not doing tonight, but I wrote, in the morning I wrote, Show Me The Way. And um, that, uh, I thought, that's not bad. Let's, let's, uh, let's not work myself to death here, let's take a break. <laughs> and, so, uh, so I did, I went swimming and had lunch and, uh, and then after, uh, I guess a couple hours after lunch, I took a snooze, got up, picked the guitar up again, and, and then I wrote this one.
brown and gray Yeah, blue besides Clouds are stalking islands in the sun Wish I could buy one Out of season part of this whole gig is that you don't have to give up your fan card to do it. I can stand backstage and I can watch and listen and go, oh my God, there is so much passion, there is so much beauty there. Thank you all for being here this evening and sharing it with us. I'd like to extend a special thanks to the members of Congress and their spouses and partners and lovers and friends that they brought with them tonight. I thank you for all that you do for composers and songwriters who remind us that their gifts are, to, are, to, are gifts for all of us. These were brilliantly, they were brilliantly supported by our phenomenal music. Wait a minute, I gotta introduce the band before we do. The phenomenal Mr. Chris Caswell. Who I've known since he was my height. Uh, Eric Walls on guitar. Doug Walter on the keys. Leland Sklar, the world famous Lee Sklar on bass. Omar Hakim on drums. Our vocalist, Vanice Thomas, John James, and Jill Delabate. Please give them a huge round of applause. You all are fantastic. So don't leave. I'm going to sing. And I'm going to do some. I'm going to sing one a song. And I'm going to do something I normally don't do. I'm going to sing a song that I did not write. I want to sing a song written by my favorite ASCAP writer ever, the ASCAP writer that I loved the most and who I thought was just the most impressive of any ASCAP writer I ever met. Play that little intro, would you? Yeah, when, you know, when I hear that, I know there's a song coming, I know the background story to that song, and it touches a place in my heart that I don't know if I can even share with you tonight because it's so intensely powerful. You know, Camille Thurman was talking about the fact that, that she twice has been honored with the Herb Alpert Award, you know, for, the, for young jazz musicians and all. It's an amazing full circle because my career began when I showed up at A&M Records in 1967 in a stolen car and, <laughs> and, and found a life, found a career, found a, something I, that I could do, that I love doing. And it is the elegance of kindness and the generosity of this wonderful publishing company that took me in and gave me a place to, to, to develop my craft. Now. I had an, a pretty good couple of first years at, at A&M Records, so my little brother came on out to A&M Records and he said, I'm gonna write songs too. And they signed a short-term deal and for six months he wrote wonderful rockabilly songs that nobody would even listen to all the way through. And he had a nice little office on the A&M lot, which is the old Chaplin studio, it was a great lot. And two days before he lost, the deal was up and he was gonna have to move out. He went into the office 
It was a Saturday, and it was pouring out rain outside, and he'd been trying to write these kinds of songs, other people's songs, what are hits, and you try to write a hit, you know, you try and you try and nothing's working. And he was totally confused and he sat down in his office and he looked around and he said, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. This is totally confusing. And he wrote down, day after day, I'm more confused. <laughs> and it was pouring rain outside. So he wrote, yet I look for the light in the pouring rain. And he sat there, and from the center of his chest, he wrote something that I think will live forever. I love the, my brother so much. November 16th, mentor Williams drifted away at the age 70, but he will always be with me in the center of my chest, and I can't think of a better way to close this night, if you'll permit me, to sing my brother mentor Williams' song, Drift Away. <laughs> Day after day, I'm more confused. Yet I look for the right through the pouring rain. You know that's a game that I hate to lose. I'm feeling the strain. Ain't it a shame, baby? Oh, give me the beat, boys, free my soul. I wanna get lost in your rock and roll and drift away. Give me the beat, boys, free my soul. I wanna get lost in your rock and roll and drift away. to think that I'm wasting time I am. Man, I don't understand the things that I do. The world outside seems so unkind. But I'm counting on you to carry me through. Give me the beat, boys, and free my soul. I want to get lost in your rock and roll and drift away. Yeah, give me the beat, boys, and free my soul. I want to get lost in your rock and roll and drift away. When my mind is free, you know a melody can move me. When I'm feeling blue, your guitar's coming through to soothe me. Thanks for the joy you've given me. I want you to know I believe in your song. Your rhythm, your rhyme, your harmony. You help me along. You're making me strong. Oh, give me the beat, boys, free my soul. I wanna get lost in your rock and roll and drift away. Come on. Give me the beat, boys, free my soul. I wanna get Your song. Oh, give me the beat, boys, and free my soul. I wanna get lost in your rock and roll and drift away. Oh, give me the beat, boys, and free my soul. I wanna get lost in your rock and roll and drift away. God bless you, everybody. We'll see you all back. Thank you for being here, everybody. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.